Hey gang, Pablo here. I don't typically start my videos this way, but I wanted to provide you with a couple pieces of information that I omitted from the video. And that is that the four lenses, the RF lenses that I use today, are not macro lenses. They become macro-ish based on the extension tubes that I talk about today. And so this allows you to get that much closer to your subject and provide you with some pretty nice macro shots. But some will be out of focus or won't be focused throughout the image based on a couple different factors, but mainly it's focusing distance. So keep that in mind as you're watching the video. Enjoy. <laughs> Buenos dias and welcome back to another video. My friends, I hope that you're staying healthy and I hope that you're staying safe wherever you are in the world. Today on the channel, I wanna talk about a feature that the Canon EOS R6, the R5, the RP, and I believe the 5D Mark IV have, and that is focus bracketing. In conjunction with focus bracketing, we are going to do some macro photography and we're gonna utilize a product by JJC, not sponsored, an extension tube that they make that is an RF mount extension tube that fits right on your R6, R5, or RP, or R, and you place your RF lenses right on there. No worries, no problems. So let's get into it. Let me quickly explain the setup that I have here today as it will be the same for all four lenses that we'll be using. The lenses that we'll be using are all RF lenses. They are the 70 to 200, the 15 to 35, the 28 to 70, and the 50 millimeter prime. On the floor, I have a tripod that is extended by the neck up to the surface of a regular size table. Mounted to the tripod in portrait mode is the Canon EOS R6. On the Canon EOS R6, I have two extension tubes made by JJC that I mentioned earlier. The link is in the description below if you wanna take a further peek at those. I have a 15 mil, uh, excuse me, a 16 millimeter and an 11 millimeter extension tube on each, making it 27 millimeters of extension. And on the lens or the lens today that I'm starting with is the 70 to 200. On either side of the subject, I have two lights, a flat panel light, and a more focused light. And then I have an alligator clip, a small alligator clip that is holding up a, I think what we call a skeleton key. Now in the background, I have an iPad with an image of some twinkle lights. So I wanna blur those out as much as possible. And I'll show you that, or I'll show you more of that here in this session. All right, let's get started. So my first tip to you to utilize the focus bracketing feature in the Canon EOS R6 or any of the cameras that I mentioned earlier would be to set up your exposure on your actual subject. That means the exposure triangle, which is your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. Once you've got that set and you have a starting point, so in this case, I'm gonna start with the bottom. I'm gonna focus on the bottom of this key here. And there you go. And then the next thing that you wanna do is go into the menu. You're gonna go into the shoot menu or the red menu, and you're gonna click on the fifth page. And then what you're gonna do is enable focus bracketing. And then you're gonna to wanna to select the number of shots. Most of the time, I leave it at 999. And once it finishes, it might be 50 shots, it might be 250 shots. Uh, know that you may not be shooting 900 or 999. By the way, 999 is the largest amount of shots that you can take in any one session. And then what you wanna do is select the focus increment. Now you'll see that it runs anywhere from narrow to wide or one to 10. And what that just means, if you select something like one, that means you're taking really small slivers or layers of the horizontal or vertical image. And so what it'll do is it'll just progress through that image until it is done taking all the focus shots. If you go 10 or select 10, but it will record those images in wider chunks 
hopefully that makes sense. And then finally what you're going to want to do is either disable or enable focus smoothing. For now, I'm going to leave it off, but you can certainly try it out and see what kind of results that you might get with exposure smooth. One last tip before I click the shutter button, I always set the camera to a two second timer. So there is time between the moment I click the shutter and the time it actually fires off and takes the image. That way it minimizes any minimal shake that I might have by pressing the shutter button. All right, I'm at ISO 100, F2.8, ISO 100. Let's go ahead and start shooting these images. All right, hold on, I have to mention this and I had to make an adjustment to the key right here. The problem with it is that I had the key hanging earlier and it was just too vertical. That means it's in the same plane and when you're taking that image that everything's already gonna be in focus and that's just a regular shot. What we wanna do is get the macro version of this shot so everything is in focus from the front end of it all the way to the back end of it. And what's really cool about this feature or the feature in the uh, focus bracketing is it will start to focus all the way through to the background. So I have those twinkle lights in an image on the background on an iPad. It will start to try to get those in focus as well. Even though I really don't wanna use those in post, I won't have to and I'll show you that later as well. But let's go ahead and reset. So I've reset this image. So I had to shut down the images a little bit early but at about 350, I was satisfied with the actual layering of each of those focus bracketed images. And here is the result. All right, the second subject is all set up. It's a plumeria flower. I tried to splash a little bit of water on it to give it a little bit of texture. I changed the background on the iPad to like a kaleidoscope kind of feel. And the same lights are on either side of the 28 to 70 lens that I have now on the camera. I did take off a layer of the extension tube. So I took the 16 millimeter off and now I'm just at 11 millimeters. It just wasn't able to focus. I, I couldn't get a nice focus uh, with that much extension, 27 millimeter. So 11 will work for now. And I've placed the actual flower a little bit kind of um, angled so you have some back focus that we need to get and some front focus that we need to capture. I also want to mention that I'm using 1.8F um, as my focus, uh, automatic or autofocus. Um, you can choose whatever you'd like. You can try different things. I'm actually still experimenting, but for now I find that uh, 1.8F works well um, but again uh, I'm not saying that that's the end-all be-all but again this is a part of this is part of the experimentation so um, yeah let's go ahead and go for it I'm at 1 60th of a second 2.8 ISO 100 I'm gonna make certain that my focus bracketing bracketing is enabled which now it is at 999 shots I'm gonna actually change this because I've noticed that um, it's not nowhere nearing that. So I'm gonna leave it at 499 and that should do it. So here we go, two second timer still on. I'm focused at the bottom front of the flower and we'll go from there. Here we go. Hey, this is pretty fun. Let's move on to the second to last lens, the 50 millimeter RF 1.2. I do have it set at 1.2 at 1 1600th of a second at ISO 100. I have the two lights on either side and we are shooting Yoda this time with an iPad backdrop of kind of a celestial star type thing going on in the background. I've actually turned Yoda somewhat profile wise. So we kind of get this, we start to capture the the front side or the ear side here and then all the way back to his back ear and into the celestial image so uh, celestial image and so anyways let's get going I've enabled it to I think 399 or 499 images hopefully it doesn't take that many the last one took a hundred so let's go ahead and get started again I'm on a two-second timer so let's get started Right, on to the last lens and the last subject. This lens is the 15 to 35, 
and I am shooting a pendant that is in the shape of a heart and it has a lot of little uh, tchotchkes inside of it and I'm shooting it with lights on either side and the backdrop on the iPad is some really large cool looking diamonds so hopefully those are obscured in the image but they're gonna look pretty cool and uh, one trick that I do try to do on some of these is set the lens to manual and then kind to kind of look around the image to make sure that I can manually focus and um, on different pin parts of the actual subject. So then when I know I put it back on automatic exposure and uh, focus bracketing will go through the image, then um, I know that it's safe to go through the image, that it goes from the bottom to the top in a plane um, in terms of forwards and backwards and on to the background image. So here we go, I'm all set. Uh, we are set at 1 100th of a second, F2.8, ISO 100, let's roll. Now let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop so I can show you how I stack these images. All right, I've loaded up all the images into Lightroom. And another quick tip, if you're running a string of images from one particular SD card and you're throwing them into Lightroom or whatever editor you use, one tip, especially if you're shooting, for example, or reshooting um, the same subject over, you might want to give yourself a one or two um, blank images or just put your hand over the lens to give yourself a break between one set of images and another set. Similar to the one you see here, I have a bunch of, of the plumeria flower and then I wanted to redo it so I put my hand in front of the lens took a shot and now I know that this next set is the set that I want to use. So the image that we're going to edit together and blend together is the heart pendant. Um, I'm just starting with the first image and I'm going to go ahead and just edit a single image. Again, these were all raw files and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the exposure just a little bit so the background comes into play a little bit there. I'm gonna make this a little contrasty. Um, pull down the highlights a little bit. Pull up the shadows. Check our whites here. And I check our blacks. Okay. I like to add a little bit of texture, up to 10, 10 to 20, but here we'll leave it at 11. I'm gonna bring down the clarity. It's kind of an offset there, but kind of just part of my routine. I like to use dehaze to see where we're at and what it might do. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at about 20 there. I um, like to kick in a little vibrancy, just a tad, and hit me with some of that saturation. All right, we can use the tone curves on the individual colors. I like to do this because it kind of gives you a different feel. You see how that nicely that background kind of, just everything kind of gets in that, um, kind of purplish or red red hue. Let's get into the green. For whatever reason, this is my least favorite. It seems to turn it too green for me, but then when we pull it back down into the reds, we're okay. It's just it's just because we're in between the the tonal colors and now we'll uh, finish it off with the blue. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Bring those blues in there deepen them a little bit okay that's that's gonna be good and I'm gonna leave the let rest alone so there was the original and there's what it looks like now and so that's just one image so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll to the end of the last heart pendant image I'm gonna click shift select them all and then I'm gonna come over here to sync and I'm gonna sync all of those or synchronize all of those images to the one that we just um, edited. So it's done now. They're still all selected. Now you do have the option of using uh, Lightroom's uh, Photo Merge HDR. Um, it just doesn't work for me 100% of the time so I like to edit all my photos and open in layers in Photoshop. Alright so once Photoshop finishes importing all of the layers which 
can take about three to four to five minutes depending on how many images you're actually bringing over into layers. What we wanna do is, what we wanna do in Photoshop is select the first image and go down to the bottom, click shift and select the last image and that'll select all or you could just command A or I think control A on a Windows machine and select all. And then what we wanna do is come up here to edit, auto align layers, and then just auto align okay. And this will process through and take a little bit of time. Okay, the progress bar is just about finished. It's at the last one. And then what we wanna do is we wanna head back up to edit. And I'll actually, I wanna show you what you see here is um, you see some kind of white marching um, ants or just some white and black spacing around the edge of it. That means that it took and automatically blended or aligned each of those images, um, each of the whatever, I think it was 100 images, and made sure that it placed them back into place here. So this is just one of the images. It hasn't blended them yet. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that there is a lot of detail in here. Uh, and that's macro photography. I mean, that's beautiful as is right there, I think. I mean, it's just nice. It's really cool to be able to see that much detail. Anyways, let's go ahead and um, go up to, let's minimize this. Yes, there we go. Let's go back up to edit. They're all still selected, all of the images, all of the layers, and we're gonna auto blend layers and we're gonna go stack images. And what it's, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. Some people don't like it, but um, it's gonna use content aware fill to fill the edges. Sometimes I just end up cropping in a little bit anyway. So if it does a good job or it doesn't, I can uh, take it or leave it. So I leave it selected. You can do what you would like. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And again, it's gonna go through that process. Just a couple things while the progress bar moves through all of the layers and starts to blend this image. I would like to say that all of the lenses and the cameras and um, like this uh, little alligator clip and whatever else, uh, some of the lights, I use this, um, this little small panel light that I just picked up. Uh, Fairly inexpensive, it's about $50, and it's a nice flat panel light. Um, I'll put those down in the description, the links to all of these uh, products, if you wanna take a closer look and see the type of stuff that I used for this setup anyways. And also, I'd like to introduce some new merch. I have a link down in the description if you wanna see some of my initial concepts in terms of um, some of my merchandise, some shirts especially. I have this on different types of products in my, um, in my store. And I also have one of my original images that uh, I think I posted on Instagram. Um, I call it Sunset Surfer. And so my original image is on there that you can place on a shirt or you can choose uh, one that I turned into kind of a uh, neon, Tokyo neon flavor of uh, image. So I really like that shirt. Actually, I'm ordering that one next. And I'd love for you to take a look. So down in the description below, if you want to check out those links to my store or any of the products that I use here today, I would certainly appreciate it. Photoshop is just about finished blending. If you notice the outside will soon become filled in, won't have that white any longer and you will have content aware, fill that in. And here's the final image. So now we do have the marching ant. So in some cases, what you're gonna have to do is once we save it, we're going to just crop it. You could crop it here in Photoshop. I just prefer to crop it back in Lightroom. So what you wanna do next so you don't have a super large file is go over to layer and then flatten image. And then once that's done and it has flattened the image, uh, it's just taken all the components and kind of compressed it. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and save. So what'll happen is in Lightroom, it will take this image. And if we go back to Lightroom and we go to the end here, you'll notice that there's a gray box here. This is the 
blended image. So Photoshop did a pretty good job on this and so did the R6's focus bracketing. I think we can do better up here on the right side of the heart, but if you notice all the way through here, it's pretty sharp all the way around these edges here and down towards the bottom. It's, it's pretty nice. It just gets a little soft here and up to the top, so I don't think it ever really um, blended or, sorry, it, I don't think it ever got focus on that edge. Uh, but the left side of the image and towards the top here on these diamonds and everything else, really solid, very cool. So anyways, that's a fun image and that's going to do it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this process of blending images after focus stacking them or focus bracketing them in the Canon EOS R6. Again, it's also in the EOS R5, the RP, and the 5D Mark IV. And I there might be a couple other cameras, but those are the ones that I do know about. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment down below and let me know if you've done any type of macro photography or focus bracketing of this sort. There's a lot of different things that we can add to this and do differently. We can actually go out into the field. I think that this camera and focus bracketing has a lot to offer. I think you might be able to do other things out in the field rather than just doing macro, but going ahead and utilizing the focus bracketing in landscape type stuff and just get some unique images and try some creative artistic shots based on what the camera might pick up from front to back and doing it automatically. All right, that's gonna do it. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. I really appreciate you joining the Buenos Dias imagery family. Please give me a comment down below. I'd love to chat with you. Give me a like if this video provided you any value whatsoever and please ring the bell to notify you of new videos when they are posted. I love you all, that's gonna do it, peace.